In question number 31, the ray of light travels from an optically denser medium to rarer medium. The critical angle for the interface is C. We want to find the maximum possible angle of deviation. Here the angle of deviation will be maximum when light is incident at critical angle. The deviation is given by 180 minus 2i here i is c so that will be pi minus 2c so option 2 is correct option in question number 32 two mirrors are placed parallel to each other and having distance 3 meter between them a person is standing at 1 meter from one mirror and 2 meter from another mirror. We want to find the second nearest image in the right mirror and distance of object from it. This is the right mirror. The first image created is the image of the person that will be at the distance of 1 meter. The second image is created of the image created in mirror L1. Here from L1 this person is at a distance of 2 meter. So behind the mirror his image will also be at 2 meter. So for mirror L2 the distance of this image. Now this image will behave as an object for mirror L2. So distance of it is 2 plus 2 plus 1 that is 5 meter. So image will also be created 5 meter behind the mirror. So this distance will be 5 meter. We want to find the distance from person that will be 5 plus 1 that is 6 meter from the person. So option 3 is correct option. In question number 33, in the figure shown, AB is plane mirror of length 40 cm placed 40 cm above the ground. There is a source of light S at a distance 20 cm from mirror. We want to find the minimum and maximum height of a man required to see the height of image of the source standing at a point P on the ground. Here point P is at 60 cm from the wall containing mirror. In this case first we have to find the field of view of the source. So we will incident light on the extreme points of mirror. These are the reflected lights. This is the minimum height required of the man so that he can see the image at point B and maximum is at, at A dash so that he can see the image at A. So from the right angle triangle S, B, N and B, B dash, N dash we can write 20 divided by 40 is equals to 60 divided by h minimum minus 40. This is written from the similarity of triangles S, B, N and triangle B, B dash, N. From this we can find h minimum as 160 centimeter. Now to find the maximum height, we will consider triangle S A N is similar to triangle A A dash N dash. So in similar triangles, the ratio of sides are same. So 20 by 80 is equals to 60 divided by H max minus 80. Simplify this, we will get the maximum height as 320 centimeter
सो ऑप्शन वन इज करेक्ट ऑप्शन इन क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फोर इट इज गिवन दैट अल्यूमिनस ऑब्जेक्ट इज प्लेस्ड ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर फ्रॉम द सरफेस ऑफ अ कन्वेक्स मिरर it is set so that the virtual image formed in the two mirror that is plane mirror and convex mirror coincide the plane mirror is at a distance of 12 cm from the object we want to find the focal length of the convex mirror here the distance of object from the mirror is 12 cm so distance of virtual image formed by plane mirror will also be 12 cm here yeah, the distance between these two mirrors will be 8 cm so this image should be at a distance 4 cm so from the convex mirror image distance will be 4 cm as it is virtual image distance will be positive object distance is minus 20 cm we want to find the focal length we will use the mirror formula 1 by f is equals to 1 by v plus 1 by u so 1 by f is equals to 1 by 4 minus 1 by 20 so 1 by f will be 5 minus 1 divided by 20 so focal length will be 5 centimeter so option 1 is correct option in question number 35 it is given that a clock fixed on a wall shows the time 4 hour 25 minutes and 37 seconds we want to find its image in plane mirror to find the image from in plane mirror we will subtract this from 12 hour 0 minute and 0 second so we will get the answer 7 hour 35 minute and 23 seconds so option 3 is correct option in question number 36 a plane mirror is placed along positive x axis facing along positive y axis the equation of linear object is x is equals to y we want to find the equation of its image here image will be created in the fourth quadrant the equation will be x is equals to minus y so x plus y is equals to 0 so option is correct option in question number 37 it is given that two adjacent walls and the ceiling of a rectangular room are mirror surfaced then how many images of a person he can see let's see these are the two adjacent walls that are mirrored and person is standing at this point due to these two mirrors placed at right angle to each other the number of images formed will be 3 and they will be in this position this is image 1 image 2 and image 3 3 Three images are created by two adjacent walls now there is a ceiling over here so ceiling will create image of object as well as image of this three images so image created by ceiling will be 4 so total number of images will be 7 change the option number 3 to 7 and option 3 will be correct option in question number 
if u represents the object distance and v represents the image distance and given u is equals to v line will cut the u versus v graph at which point the mirror formula is 1 by v plus 1 by u is equals to 1 by f here it is given u is equals to v so 2 by u is equals to 1 by f so f will be equal to u by 2 u will be equal to 2f will be equal to v so the line u is equals to v will cut the graph at point 2f comma 2f so option 2 is correct option in question number 39 a ray of light incident on a transparent block at an angle of 60 degree here the angle of incidence is 60 degree the refractive index of the material is 1.732 that is root 3 we want to find the angle of deviation of the refracted ray let's say this is refracted ray this is the actual direction of incident ray this total angle will be 60 degree so angle of deviation will be 60 degree minus angle of refraction to find angle of refraction will apply Snell's law that is sine 60 degree is equals to mu that is root 3 sine r so root 3 by 2 is equals to root 3 sine r from this we will get r is equals to 30 degree so angle of deviation will be 60 degree minus 30 degree that will give us answer delta is equals to 30 degree so option 3 is correct option in question number 40 the difference in the number of wavelengths when yellow light propagates through air and vacuum columns of the same thickness is 1 we want to find the thickness here the change in thickness is equal to lambda so t will be equal to lambda upon mu minus 1 lambda is 6000 angstrom mu is 1.0003 minus 1 simplify this we will get t is equals to 2 millimeter so option 2 is correct option in question number 41 it is given that when a ray of light traveling from vacuum to a medium of refractive index mu the angle of incidence is twice the angle of refraction so i is equals to 2r we want to find the incident angle here applying Snell's law we can write sine i is equals to mu sine r so sine i is equals to mu sine r can be written as sine i by 2 here sine i can be replaced by 2 sine i by 2 into cos i by 2 is equals to mu sine i by 2 the sine i by 2 will get cancelled out so 2 cos of i by 2 is equals to mu so cos i by 2 is equals to mu by 2 so i will be equal to 2 cos inverse of mu by 2 so option 2 is in question number 42 xy is the surface separating two transparent media medium 1 and medium 2 lines a b and c d represent the wave from wave fronts in medium 1 and e f and g h represents the wave front in medium 2 
the first statement is after refraction the light ray travels as parallel beam here even after refraction the path difference between the rays does not change so option 1 is correct option in question number 43 a beam of parallel rays is incident on a transparent slab of refractive index root 3 making an angle 30 degree with the surface so angle of incidence will be 60 degree the width of incident beam of light is 1.732 mm this width ad of incident light ray is 1.732 mm we want to find the width of refracted beam that is b b dash here if this angle is i this angle will also be i this is angle of refraction so this angle will also be angle of refraction first we'll apply snell's law and find the angle of refraction so sin 60 degree is equals to root 3 sin r that will give us answer r is equals to 30 degree now ab will be equal to this distance is root 3 so root 3 divided by cos i here angle of incidence is 60 degree so ab is equals to root 3 divided by cos 60 is 1 by 2 so that will be 2 root 3 now b b dash is equals to so b b dash will be ab cos r ab is 2 root 3 and cos r that is cos 30 degree that is root 3 by 2 so b b dash will be 3 mm so option 4 is correct option a beam of parallel rays is incident on a transparent block at an angle of incidence 45 degree the ratio of widths of incident beam and refracted beam is root t root 2 is to root 3 here cos i can be written as width of incident ray upon ab in the previous diagram and cos r can be written as width of refracted ray upon ab taking the ratio cos i upon cos r is equals to incident ray width upon refracted ray width and that is given root t root 2 is to root 3 angle of incidence is 45 degree so cos r will be equal to root 3 by t 2 so angle of refraction will be 30 degree now applying snell's law sin i is equals to mu sin r sin i is 1 by root 2 mu sin 30 degree so mu will be root 2 that is 1.414 so option 2 is correct option in question number 45 a cube of side 15 cm is having an air bubble the bubble appears 6 cm from one face and 4 cm from opposite face we want to find the refractive index of the cube here let's say the actual depth of bubble from this side is x so from this side it will be 15 minus x the apparent depth is equals to real depth upon refractive index mu 
so apparent depth mu can be written as real depth upon apparent depth for the first case real depth is x and apparent depth is 4 and for the second case real depth will be 15 minus x and apparent depth is 6 comparing this to x by 4 is equal to 15 minus x divided by 6 so solve this equation we will get x is equal to 6 we want to find refractive index that is 6 by 4 that is 3 by 2 so option 2 is correct option thank you